today we're going to be talking about future planning. So planning your future career. Um, we've got a few different, sorry, there we go. A few different key takeaways that I want to um, sort of run through and make sure you make use of today. Um, I have got my slides on my phone. That's why I'm going to be looking at my phone a little bit just to make sure I cover all the content that I want to as well. So we're going to be looking at creating a career development plan. So some of you may have plans already in terms of where you want your career to go. Maybe you're on that path at the moment to get to where you want to be in three, five, ten years time. Um, but we're going to be giving you some tips and information on creating a really effective career development plan so that you can succeed in sort of reaching the goals that you want for your future. Um, and linking to that, we're going to look at effective goal setting. So everyone can set a goal and say, in three years' time, I want to achieve X, Y, Z. But actually, we're looking at, to make that most effective and more successful, um, we're looking at sort of breaking down your goals and effective tips on goal setting as well. Uh, we're going to look at sort of staying one step ahead and future-proofing yourself. So obviously the world of work, as you know, is changing completely to what it used to be. Um, everything's digital, people are doing sort of different jobs now. It's not necessarily sort of staying one job for life. Um, so it's looking at sort of future-proofing yourself, different tips for that, but also how you can stay one step ahead when you're in the career that you want, but always kind of having an eye on what's coming next. So you're always kind of looking a step further. Um, does anyone, does that make sense and does anyone have anything else that they want to get out of today's session when you came here? Any other aims or objectives as to why you signed up for the session? All sounds good? Lots of nods? How are we doing? Fantastic. Um, just by a show of hands, who's from the business school? So who's studying in the School of Business, Economics and Informatics? Who's from the law school? Science? Ship? So it's social science? History? Politics? No? Politics, fate, sorry, it kind of comes under ship, that's my term for it. Arts? Any that I've missed? Is that all five? Okay, so we've got a bit of a mixture, which is great. Um, so that's really good because everything that I'm going to be covering is really applicable to any career. It's not just for management students, economics, whatever it might be. Um, it is going to be for everyone. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do an activity quite early on to get us started. Similar to what I was speaking about on my last session, Understanding Emotional Intelligence, I'm talking now about self-awareness. So we spoke last time, for those of you who are here, you might remember, about understanding what your strengths are, understanding what your personality is like, uh, understanding where your development areas are as well. The more, aware, the more self-awareness you have, and that's essentially just being aware of your skills, your personality, your interests, what you can add value to in an organisation, what are your values? Everything about yourself will help you in terms of getting the career that you want. Because if you know where your strengths lie, obviously you're going to be applying for jobs that are going to be tailoring to your strengths. If there's a career change coming up or if there's a promotion that you want, being able to recognise where you need development areas is going to help you get there quicker as well. So self-development is really key. Um, you want to try and be quite smart with your career moves as well. So again, I'm kind of getting a show of hands because I want to get an idea of who's in the room. Um, who here is working at the moment in some capacity, whether that's sort of part-time, temporary, whatever it might be? Okay, fantastic. So you might be thinking, I'm happy where I am, I want to progress further, or I want to change completely and use my degree better into a, to a, a sort of career that I want. But try to be quite savvy with the moves that you make in your career. So you might not be able to, maybe you're not having much success getting the type of roles that you definitely want, but is there, are there other roles out there in a different industry you might not have thought of that's still going to help you get to the, the longer term goal and the longer term sort of aim that you have? So what I want you to do is start thinking about what your skill set uh, summary is. So if someone, it's not really an elevator pitch, you might have heard of the term elevator pitch. So when someone says, tell me a bit about yourself, and you have about 30 seconds to kind of explain who you are. It's going a little bit beyond that. This is about trying to get a real snapshot of what your skill set summary is. So what are your strengths? What are your areas that you want to develop further? And how would you describe your personality? So it's a little bit a little bit of an interesting one, because not everyone might be, be able to sort of or want to describe that. Um, but I want you to work in pairs or threes, um, depending on sort of the people around you, so people behind, in front or next to you. Just look at what your key strengths are. So if I said to you, what are your top three skills? What are they? If I said to you, what is the main areas that you want to develop? What would they be? So if you can aim for three of those, aim for at least two of those, that'll be great. And finally, how would you describe your personality? So try and aim for up to five words. I'll be generous. You don't have to use five words if you don't want to, but it'll be great if you can. So we've got three areas there. So let's start off with the strengths. 
Um, chat to each other and then I'll let you know when you need to be sort of moving on to the development areas and then going on to your personality. Now, yes, this is sort of talking about you as yourself and it's a personal thing to talk about. Everything we talk about in this room is completely confidential, obviously. Um, so the conversations you have, it's purely just to start getting this skill set summary coming out. So when you are approaching employers, when you're doing your job searches, when you're thinking about your future career, you've got a bit of an idea of this is where my summary comes in and this is how I fit into that role. Does that make sense? Yeah? So work in twos or threes. Make sure you're swapping over as well. Let's kick off with the strength. So talk to the person next to you, behind you, in front of you, or the group around you about what are your three top skills that you can bring to an employer. To give you an example, it might be uh, project management, it might be communication, it might be things like organisation, it might be a technical skill. Literally your sort of three top skills that you would say, this is where, this is my great skills. So start with that and then I'll let you know when to move on to the development areas, okay? So a couple of minutes for that, off you go, have a chat. Everyone has strengths. Think about how, if another way to think of it is if you are asking a close family friend, family member, or colleague to describe you, how would they describe you? What words would they use? Because even being quite, you know, personable, you know, having good people skills is good. Maybe you're, um, I don't know, they say you're quite intellectual, so you've got good technical knowledge of a particular area. Would they say that you're, I don't know. What could you say as well? Yeah, any, li literally, it could be anything. Communication, organisation, uh, intellect. It could be uh, project management. It could be that you're more inquisitive. You're quite curious. You ask a lot of questions. Knowledgeable. At least anything. There are so many words. So just start to wrap up your skills conversations. Now go on to your development areas, OK? So listen up, guys. So go on to your development areas. Try to highlight at least a couple of areas that you're keen to develop, whether that's particular skills, um, things that come up quite a lot, public speaking, presenting, maybe you're not the most organised person in the world, you want to work on that. Um, so areas that you're keen to develop, and within that try to talk about your personality, how you describe your personality. So another few minutes for that, just to try and get this picture so you'll end up with some strengths, some areas that you want to develop, and a bit of a brief description about your personality. All good? Keep going, a few more minutes and then we'll come back together. Okay, if you haven't already moved on to personality and how you would describe your personality, then please do that. Uh, what I was saying to the guys at the front, another way to think about this question is if someone else that knows you quite well was describing you, how would they describe you? So if you're struggling to describe your own personality to your partner or your group, then answer the question, if someone else, if I was to ask a close friend, family member, colleague to say, tell me about Sanso, describe Sanso in three words. What would they say? That's another way to think about how you can describe your personality. Okay, so if you're struggling, use that one. So two more minutes, one minute each. Describe your personality to each other, then we'll carry on with the session, all right? Okay, start wrapping up those conversations and then we'll move on. Did everyone get something down for everything? Hands up who got at least something down for all three areas. Good. So we've all got some strengths. We've all got some areas that we want to develop and we've all got a personality. Everyone agree? Everyone has a personality. Everyone has some skills and strengths. Um, so does anyone want to tell me about their strengths? Any sort of words that came out when you were describing your strengths and skills? Who's gonna give us a bit of a heads up of what they said? Yeah. Creative, good initiative. Creative, got good initiative. Okay, fantastic, good stuff. Anything else? Um, I'll go more into technical, like project management. Great, good. So you're talking about actually the technical value you could add to careers as well. Yeah, anyone else? Da, da, da. One more person. Mm 
I just heard a mumble. Someone's going to do something. Everyone said they wrote something down, so just tell me what you wrote. For you, for example. Uh, analytics. Analytics, good. And anything else? You've got a long list there, I can see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, project management and critical thinking. Good stuff. OK, this is really good. So this is you identifying what skills can you add value to for an organisation. Not only for an organisation, but for any area of your career as well. So if you haven't finished and you've got more to add to and you think of other skills and strengths, then add those to that list because they're going to come really in handy when you update your CV when you're preparing for interviews, but also when you're job searching, so you can actually match the person's specification to what they're looking for as well. Another thing that would be really good to do is ask other people. So like I said about the personality question, ask other people, what do you think my strengths are? So people you see quite often, whether that's in your peer group at university, those of you who work, whether it's your colleagues, friends and family that you see fairly often or speak to fairly often. So just have a chat with them because that will go quite a long way. So they might say things that you're, you, know, you didn't really think, oh yeah, I am a really good initiative. I am a good public speaker. Okay, um, areas to develop. This is a bit of a challenging one because it's another way of saying a lot of employers will say, what are your weaknesses? This isn't what it, that's about. This is about areas that you're keen to develop to move your career further and to maybe get that promotion or get that career change. So what did you have under development areas? Anything that anyone was, is willing to share in terms of a skill or a technical ability? Software skills. Yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, what was it? Skills. I am Barbara. Software skills, okay, fantastic. So your digital skills as well. You have one over here. I'm taking risks. Taking risks, I like that actually, because sometimes we can get really comfortable and stepping outside our comfort zone isn't easy. So sometimes you do have to take a risk with your career to actually reap the benefits of doing that as well. Okay, fantastic. And finally, the last one, which is personality. Now, I'm not going to ask anyone to sort of share how they describe their personality, but the reason why I've said this is because it comes under the self-awareness aspect. So do you know that you're quite a grumpy person in the morning? Do you know that you're really good when you feel challenged and when you're really busy at work? Are you better when your sort of things slow down a little bit? Are you an extrovert? Are you an introvert? Would you say you're quite outgoing and you want to do talks? Would you say you're rather sort of more of a researcher and you want to stay desk-based? Think about all of the aspects of your personality and there's loads of different personality tests out there. Take them with a bit of a pinch of salt because sometimes they say things that you don't agree with and you know yourself better than anyone else. But there are some interesting personal, uh, personality tests. I can include some links on the slides when I send them to Andrea. Um, just to get an idea of, you, you basically answer a set of multiple choice questions and they come up with sort of an idea of who you are and what your skills are as well. So this is just a kickoff, um, and this is just to set the kind of the tone for the day because self-awareness is a massive part of your career planning. So moving on to the actual action plan. So why do we actually plan for our careers and why is it good to have an action plan in place? So firstly, a career action plan enables you to do a lot of different things. It enables you to focus your thoughts and ideas. So it forces you to get quite specific. What do you actually want to achieve in the next year? In three years' time, where do you want to be? And how are you then going to get there? It establishes a series of steps to take. So when we talk in a minute about goal setting, it will note you'll have this longer term goal to say, I want to be, maybe it's I want to be in a team leader position by X, Y, Z. I want to be working for a big four company. I want to start my own business. Whatever your long term goal is, the goal setting part of the today will be about taking a, having a series of steps to get there because they're not all quick wins. Uh, it enables you to create an overall strategy. So rather than just sort of applying for job after job after job, getting unhappy and applying again, it actually gives you a strategic sort of focus. So you know if you're in a job at the moment, what else do you want to get out of that before you move on? At what point do you want to be looking for something else and taking your next step in your career? And also it allows you to achieve your career ob objectives within a certain time frame. So it's, we're going to look at SMART objectives. So I don't know if anyone's heard of the term SMART objectives. Any nods around the room? Yeah. Um, so we'll look at that. It's about being specific and measurable and each uh, letter stands for something. Um, but that's going to be really key in terms of planning your future career as well. Um, so the process also takes into account the fact that situations change and plans can be reviewed or altered. So we're talking about, yes, having a career action plan, but it's not a really rigid plan. It's not linear. You know, th everything curveballs. You know, there's a lot of different things that come in. Something happens maybe in your personal life that then chucks things off track. Something's going really well and then all of a sudden maybe your boss leaves and then that promotion you was going to get didn't quite happen. Like there's all these things that could get in the way. So just be aware that when we're talking about action planning, we need to have room for manoeuvre and room for flexibility. Any questions so far? <coughs> Everyone following me? 
nods in the room. Okay, fantastic. So you've got loads of different options and depending on what stage you're at in your career, you might choose one of these things, you might choose to do all of these things or there might be something completely different on your radar. But in terms of your future, you might opt to go for further study. Uh, you might opt to stay in the job that you're in at the moment for those of you who are working and look to work your way up if you're happy there. Some of you might be looking for a completely new role, um, so in a different organisation, but maybe in the same area that you're working in at the moment. Others might be looking at for a <coughs> career change. So just by a show of hands, who's in this category? Who's looking for a career change at the moment? Okay, fantastic. Who would fall into this category that after graduating or after finishing your studies or soon, you'll be looking for a new role, but in the same industry that you're in at the moment? Okay, so changing up a bit. Um, who wants to stay in the same job that they're in at the moment and progress in there? We won't focus on that category. Okay, fantastic. Um, and who's interested in maybe going into further study? Cool. So you could fit into sort of one or more of those categories. It's quite flexible. So there are a lot of options out there, and that's why a plan comes into, into, in, into place to make it as realistic and successful as possible as well. So... This is kind of a bit of a tool that you can use as well. We're not going to do a long activity on this, but I want to run this through you first and give you a chance to sort of take it in um, and maybe think of what you'd put in each box. So on the purple side on the right there, you've got where you are now. So this is kind of like your roadmap. So where you are now, you're studying at Birkbeck, uh, maybe you're working wherever it might be. So you can jot down a few things. You can do this as we go along, or I'll give you a couple of minutes afterwards. But just to have a think about where are you now. So talk about your career. So are you, where you, are you working? Are you studying? Are you doing both? Are you actively um, sort of searching for a job at the moment? Just to capture some bullet points of what you're doing at the moment. So the things that you can look at um, is trying to establish your purpose or direction. Try to identify your development needs. That's exactly what we did in the last exercise. And try to identify some learning opportunities. So if you are in a job at the moment that you're keen to get out of soon, try to think, is there anything else while you're still there that you can get out of that job as, as soon as possible? So are there any um, training opportunities that they might offer? Are there any job shadowing opportunities that you might want to get a bit of experience with other people in the team? Is there any other responsibilities that you might want to take on just to dip your toe into other areas of the business? Try to think about as many learning opportunities as you can. So that's all sort of the top three, the, the purple bits that can help you with your bullet points on where are you now. Then we go on to the, the bluish kind of bit, bit blue, light or purple, whatever you call it. Um, so this is where your plan comes in. So based on your purpose, your direction, your development needs, your learning areas and what you want to achieve, try to formulate an action plan to make that happen. So if you've got development needs in particular training areas, software skills, are there any online courses that you could take? Do you want to say that in three months' time, I want to have some sort of online, have taken an online course in a particular coding language or a particular software skill, whatever it might be? So the action plan can be anything. So if you're seeing where you are now and you try to get an action plan to put these in place, this then will try to lead to where you want to be. And you can work this forwards and backwards as well. So record the outcomes of doing actually the action plan that you've put in place and try to review how it happens. Now you might find it easier to start at the blue box at the end, where do you want to be? So you actually say, okay, in a year's time, I want to be in a role in a startup in London working on their marketing and strategy plans or whatever that might be. You can then work backwards. Okay, so now I'm studying, I'm going to be finished my master's. I need to get a bit of ex more experience in marketing. I need to learn a bit about startups and how they operate. And then I can start applying for my jobs. So that might be easier to work backwards to say, where do you want to be? And work backwards from there. And that point can be repeated throughout your career. So you can say that's in a year's time. When you land the job you want, you then might, to re might want to revisit this, be like, okay, now that I'm here, rather than just cruising in this job and enjoying it for a few years, where do I want to be in three years' time here? Do I want to work my way up into a team leader position, into a management position? Do I want to learn different skills and take on their training opportunities? So try to repeat this as much as possible throughout your career so that you're constantly learning and you're constantly moving your career forward. That kind of makes sense. So if you're job hunting, and it is about finding the job that you want, try to think about what's going to really get you there. Look at job descriptions at the moment. Look at organisations you're keen to work in. What type of skills do they want? What type of technical skills might they need as well as your soft skills? And see where you can work on them and then you'll be more confident going into those applications as well. 
So again, I'll share these slides, but that's just an idea of how to sort of see your plan in action and get it started. Um, however, going back to sort of the starting point, this is similar to what we did at the start here. So career planning will enhance your short term and long term opportunities and success. Everything that we talk about today is about you, you actually taking action and taking control of your career. So it's not about you waiting for an opportunity to come up and then you going for that opportunity. You know, a job description lands on your desk and you think, oh, that's great, I'm going to go for that. Or you wait on read.com for six months for the right job to come up and then you apply for it. This is about actually you taking control and getting in the driving seat for your career as well. So don't just wait for opportunities to arrive. Be really proactive in terms of networking. We're going to talk about that later. You know, your goal setting, are there people in your network that you could you know, leverage already? So consider where you are right now and where you want to be. That's what we've just sort of said about. Um, think of this, it's an activity that we're going to do um, shortly as well because we've kind of done these two. We've looked at your key strengths, what are you best at? We've looked at areas that you want to develop. What I'd like you to do now is look at these two. So where do you want to be in a year's time? Maybe you haven't thought about that at all, but this is a great chance to start thinking ahead and this is where the career action planning comes in. So I want you to think about it, but again, have a chat with your partners, have a chat with your groups. Where do you want to be in one year's time? You could then take that further. Where do you want to be in three years' time? If that works out, what do you want in three years' time? And if that works out, what do you want to be, where do you want to be in 10 years' time? And where does that look like? Now, that's really long-term planning, but that's just to get an idea of where your direction's going. The other thing I'd like you to talk about is what are you most passionate about? So you've spoken a bit about your personality and your strengths, but actually, what is it you're, that you're passionate about and what drives you? because we're going to come onto the goal setting side in terms of the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why is it that you're looking for this position? Why have you got that particular goal? So, next quick activity. Um, we're doing okay for time, which is good. So kick off, where do you want to be in one year's time? And see if you can push the boundaries to three years and 10 years, just to get a bit of blue sky thinking. And then I'll let you know when to start onto the second question, which is talking about your passions and what drives you, okay? So a few more minutes, um, so make sure you've got a couple of minutes each. I'll let you know when you should be switching over. Where do you want to be in one year's time? And if you can, start thinking ahead to three years, 10 years, just for a bit of blue sky thinking for today as well, okay? So a couple of minutes each, off you go, and then we'll swap over. Winding down, lovely. Um, so yeah, sorry to cut those conversations. Please feel free to carry those on um, when we finish. We will probably finish just before five o'clock, so you'll have time to chill and network afterwards. Um, so how easy was it, just by a show of hands, who found it easy to establish where you want to be in one year's time? Okay, interesting. Three years, who found that easy? 10 years? Nice, okay, good stuff. Now, the, re now, the reason why we've put this up, and it is a very general term, because it could literally mean anything. It could be, where do you want to be in your life? Do you want to be living it somewhere in particular? Do are you think in a sort of future planning? Um, do you want to, I don't know, settle down somewhere? It could be something personal as well as career focused as well. So all of that matters to your future career planning. Because if your career's on the right track, it needs to obviously match what you want your personal life to do as well. And technically, you should be doing something you're passionate about. And that's why that question was there as well. Does anyone want to share what they'd like to be doing in one year's time? Does anyone want to let us know what their plan is for the next year? So this time next year, in May 2020, how are we in 2020 next year? That's crazy. Um, where do you want to be? Does anyone want to share that with us? Yeah. yeah, still doing my course, but maybe finding more like a work in the field. Great, okay, fantastic. So you're still going to be working towards your qualification that you're studying here on your course, but maybe working in a more relevant role to the industry you want to work in. Fantastic, good stuff. That's really good because that's really specific. And actually that allows you to give some really specific points of how you can actually get there. So what are you going to be doing to try and get that role in that new career? Okay, anyone else? One year's time. Um, it's a bit, I don't know, I kind of have like two branching versions, but the ideal one is, if possible, remaining in London, mm -hmm. uh, that's the big if, uh, followed by preferably having uh, a position in, uh, an administrative position in an arts or theatre nice. place, and starting to work uh, with the small theatre company I'm trying to form with people I would team with. 
Brilliant, awesome. So again, that makes it specific if you can break it down. So you've got one that's living in London, you've got one about the role that you want as well. And that could get quite nicely and you can really get quite practical with it. Say living in London, what, do, what needs to happen for you to be able to stay in London? That might be how much you need to be earning, where do you want to live? Um, and therefore that'll inform what type of job do you need to be going for? So how much do you need to be earning in your role? Are there any side projects that you could do that could kind of up your income as well? Think outside the box in terms of other skills that you've got that you could freelance or do something in the evenings or weekends. There's other things that you can think about because then those two merge together. Because if that happens, you live in London, then you know where you're going to be applying for jobs. If you're looking at that first, then this one comes a bit flexible. So you kind of see how this planning, yes, you've got these year plans, but now we're going to go on to goal setting so you can start breaking it down and making it really specific. Anyone want to tell us about their passions? What are you passionate about? What drives you? I, heard, I overheard some good conversations, so everything that everyone said was good. Um, but anything, anyone want to say, what's, what's the main passion? Where, where is their passion coming from? You were definitely saying some good stuff, so you can say yours as well. But what's one thing that was you're passionate about? Um, I, I want to. I want to teach people. So yeah. I want to work in. Um, I want to work in like museum environments mm -hmm. to uh, make things uh, interesting to people and make them passionate about uh, you know arts or creativity. Or Amazing. Yeah, I want to work with film conference and conservation as well. Great, okay, fantastic. So your passion is about supporting other people, teaching other people, getting people as passionate as you are about the art sector maybe and what they could do, and all of that's driving your career, which is great. Now the reason I put this in there is because this is kind of where your why comes in. So when we talk about goal setting, you've got your what, so what's the goal, and then you've got your why. Now if your why, and you've probably heard of Simon Sinek, start with why. Maybe, if you haven't, have a look at him, he's got a book out. But anyway, there is some relevance to it. So, if you, he says start with why, but effectively you need to know what your what is first. So what's your goal, and so what's the tangible goal that you've got? It's to live in London. Why? Try to think about the why behind that. There's more opportunities, it's really diverse, it's great nightlife or social, whatever it might be. But if you know what your why is, and if your why is strong enough, then that's going to motivate you to get there even sooner and be much more successful with it. If it's a really long process and it's a long-term career goal, go back to your why. Why am I doing this? I've got a two years, mas two years master's that I'm studying for. Why? So halfway through the course, you're struggling, you're starting to look at your dissertation, you've got exams, you've got deadlines, and sometimes that motivation might lack a little bit. And we were talking about in the last session about emotional intelligence, it's trying to think, okay, what motivates us to make us you know, be more positive, proactive, and sort of be more successful with our days. So answer the why. So the what we've spoken about quite a bit. So define your goals, be clear, concise, and specific, and we'll talk about SMART goals in a minute. Um, try to make them performance focused rather than outcome focused. So if it's outcome focused, you're kind of tying yourself down to say, oh, if I don't reach that specific point, I would have failed and you haven't. Try to make it more about performance focus. So you want to upskill yourself. You want to be in sort of an industry you're working in, being more, you know, doing something that you're more passionate about. Rather than saying, I want to get a promotion in six months time. Try to make it more performance about you and your own personal development. But once you've got your what, then why do you actually want to achieve this? What is, it, what is it going to do for you? Once you've got the reason, you can then get to the answer. So everything you've said, so in one year's time, three years time, 10 years time, you want to do A, B, C, apply the why question to that. Why do you want to do that? Just so you can really get your motivations up as well. And similar with your skills, your, de um, your development areas, they'll all come into it as well. I want to develop this particular skill. That's why I want to do software skills in the next couple of years. I want to develop that area. Why? Because it's going to get me a better job or it's going to get me the career that I want and it's going to change my path. So just think about that. Does that kind of make sense? The what and the why. Everyone got that? Any questions so far? Feel free to ask as, you go, as we go along. We'll have a Q&A at the end as well. So moving on from that, we've mentioned SMART goals. So some, some of you nodded when we said about SMART goals. So this essentially stands for specific. So the goal needs to be specific. It can't be necessarily quite general. You want it to be as specific as possible. Um, so for example, um, yours is a really good one at the back there. I want to be continuing with my course and I want to have landed a job in the industry that I'm interested in. So that's specific, but not going sort of too far down sort of, I want to work at the National Theatre, for example, it's something a bit more general than that. Then the M is for measurable. So something that you can measure. So 
if you were to take that one, sorry, I'm using your example quite a lot, but are you living in London in a year's time? It's measurable, yes or no. That's simple as. Um, am I in a job that I'm passionate about in the industry that I wanted to work in? Yay or nay. Um, so make sure it's measurable as well. Is it achievable? So achievable and realistic are two slightly different things. So can you achieve it in the, in the time that you've, sent, you've set as well? So it's specific, it's measurable, but is it actually achievable? So for example, do you have the skills that you need to get there? Is it achievable to say, okay, I need this qualification and this course in three months time when it's a six month course? Probably not. So just make sure it's achievable. And that kind of goes hand in hand with, is it realistic? Is it kind of a realistic goal or are you kind of thinking too far outside of the box? Um, and finally, timely or time bound. Um, so put a time limit on it. So that's why I said in one year, three years, 10 years, you might want to break it down into three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, depending on what your goal is and how you can break that down. Now, I'm quite a bit of an optimist um, and I change these sometimes. So I do a goal setting workshop and I quite like to change the A and the R. So the A I keep as an A, but I make it ambitious. And the R I, take, I change to challenging. Because if you're not challenging yourself and you're not being ambitious, then you actually don't know how far you can stretch in terms of your capabilities. So try to think like you're stretching yourself. So don't just think, you know, is it realistic? Is it achievable? Do I have these skills? Can I do it? Because you'll be questioning yourself quite a lot. You look at a person's specification on a job, a job description and you reach seven out of 10, you can tick, but the other three you don't. Are you still gonna apply for that job? Who would say yes? Who would say no? Apply for that job. So don't restrict yourself. No one's ever, this is just a general tip for job hunting, no one's ever gonna get the perfect person for the perfect role. They're looking for everything, whether that's your culture fit, the skills you can bring, the soft skills, the value you're gonna add, how you're gonna fit into the team. So don't hold yourself back because you don't tick every single box. And that's why I want you to be ambitious and challenge yourself because if a role looks achievable, but challenging, and actually it's quite ambitious, go for it. Because the worst thing that's going to happen is that you're not going to get the job, but at least you went for it and you tailored that CV, you did that interview that was probably one of the most challenging interviews that you've had, but you've learned from it as well. So I'd say smart goals I think are really good, but just consider the ambitious point and the challenging point as well. Don't just stay in your comfort zone. It's like you said at the front, you want to develop um, the whole taking, your, taking risks aspect, and that's what's going to help you. Step outside of your comfort zone as much as you can, because you don't know what the opportunities are around the corner. That's my preach on SMART goals. Um, but all good for SMART goals, everyone kind of understands the different points. So when you've got a goal, try to just go through each of these five points and ask, is it specific enough? Or is it quite general? So, oh, you know, I'm, I kind of want to change jobs in a year's time. That's a little bit too general. You want to be specific. So currently I'm in hospitality and retail. I, the next job I want to be in is marketing or some sort of business development position. Um, and therefore, in a year's time, I want to have transitioned roles into a marketing role. So try to be a bit more specific than just the general change jobs, because that's not going to allow you to really hone down on those breaking, breaking down points. So I did say it's going to be a hands-on session. Um, I did give you a piece of paper. I don't know if I've got any spare pieces of paper. There might be some over here. We've got some here as well. Um, so hopefully you've got a bit of space on your piece of paper. You can use this across the whole A4 piece of paper if you can. If you've only got half a page, that's fine. Um, but I just want you to replicate this. Um, so you'll draw an arrow um, across the page and then turn it upwards so it's facing that way. I'll just draw an arrow up the page. Um, I want you to put today's date at the bottom which I think is the 9th of the 5th, 2019. Um, and then one year at the top, so you can always put a year's time, so 9th of the 5th, 2020. And I want you just to outline, so choose one of your goals. So it could be your one year goal that you did, it's probably relevant, but if you've got a different one year goal that you'd rather focus on than the one that you spoke to your partner about, um, then you can put that down as well. So write the goal on that piece of paper as well, anywhere, just so you've got the goal in mind. On the other side of the arrow, I then want you to think of three different points or three different milestones that's kind of breaking that goal down into different chunks. So if I take your example, for, for, for example, take your example, you want to be in a role that is much more suited to your industry. Um, is it an arts industry? You said about creativity? Neurology. Neurology, fine, perfect. 
as very creative as well, I just assumed because you said creativity. So neurology. So in one year's time, you want to be in a position that's going to get you closer to your goal of working in neurology, um, whatever position that might be. So you then want to break that down into milestones. So is there any upskilling that you need to do? Is there any development areas you need? Is there a network that you need to build? So maybe you want to say, by three months' time, I want to have made connections with four different people in the sector that I want to work in, whether that's going to networking events, whether that's using your LinkedIn profile a bit more smartly, whether that's trying to use your network that you've got at the moment to ask people if they know anyone in these areas, anything like that. But your goal, your broken down goal, could be in three months' time, I want to have four good connections within the industry I want to work in. Then you might go a step further to say, I want to have developed a particular skill. I wanted to develop an online course that's going to help you get closer to where you want to be. You then might go a bit further to say, I wanted to have gained a foot in the door, some sort of experience in an industry or in a, in a role that I'm interested in, just to kind of get a, a meeting with one of the directors or a meeting with someone, go for coffee with someone who's working in the area I want to, to try and get a foot in the door. So this is where you do need to think outside the box a bit to say, yes, this is your one year goal, but actually how are you going to make that happen? And if you can, the example I gave was just kind of a generic one. I focus on sort of networking, upskilling, and then sort of actually having meetings and getting a foot in the door. But it could be anything. It could be that, I don't know, you want to stay living in London, for example. You want to then set your milestones. Do you need to review where you're at now? Do you need to review where you need to be? Where do you, where do you want to live? Where do you want to move to? Who do you need to talk to about that? Are there any opportunities for flat sharing and things like that? So break it down. So with your one year goal, I want you to set three milestones um, that you can actually use to get there as well. So chat it out with your partner because they might have some ideas in terms of what these milestones might look like. They're not set in stone. This is just to give you something to work towards. So this is my one year goal. These are the three things that I need to make happen to be able to get to that point. Does that make sense? You might only have two goals or two milestones. You might have five milestones in the next year. There's no restriction. I've just kind of given you three as a bit of an idea. So talk it through with your partner. I'm not going to give you too long, just about five minutes, because we're going to wrap up the session with the next section. Um, but chat it through, five minutes max, so you've got time to go through it each. But now to one year, what are your three milestones to get that goal done, if you like? OK, off you go. OK, does anyone want to share their one year goal and their milestones? Just to get so you, it's a good opportunity to get some feedback from the room. I can have a chat about it as well. Anyone want to give us their one year goal and what their three or four or five or two, whatever it might be, milestones are? I'm not going to force anyone. I'll give you. Five more seconds to speak. No, OK. So I thought that might happen, so I kind of prepared one. Um, no, I didn't really. So I, this is kind of taking the goal setting side to the next level, um, but I want to use this as an example. So recently it was the London Marathon. Did anyone here run the London Marathon? Did you? No. Oh, I thought you said yes. Yeah, sorry. I thought I saw you say, yeah, I did. Um, anyway, so it was the London Marathon recently. So maybe there's a goal, something inspired you to sign up for the ballot like I did. Um, and maybe this time next year you might be running uh, the London Marathon. So there's another way that you can sort of break down your goals to make sure you reach it. And that's looking at what sort of a mini goal that you set. So if you're my big goal, let's say, for example, it's not. But say, for example, in one year's time, I want to run a marathon. One of my mini goals is that I want to start running once a week, building up to 5K in one month's time. So I've made it quite specific. So in one month's time, I want to be comfortably running 5K. What do I need to achieve it? So for me, if it's running, I need motivation. I need something that's going to help me actually get out of bed and go running and do this 5K. Therefore, maybe a running partner might help or a running group that can keep my motivation up because I, don't, I might not be able to find that motivation myself. Who do I know that can help me? So I know that there's local park runs that happen in the area. So I know that that's a group that I can go to to do a 5K every week. Or I might know a friend that might be interested in helping me there as well. So I've taken one of my sort of mini goals. So this is why one month milestone is to get to 5K. I've then gone a bit further to say, OK, that's my goal. What do I need to actually achieve that? And how am I going to, who do, who, who do I know who can help me there? So with the ones that you've written down, Take one of your mini milestones, just in your head and do it as we're going through. So pick one of your mini milestones and just try to think in your head, what do you need to achieve it? 
Is it money? Is it time? Is it a certain space? Is it something untangible like motivation or something else, commitment? Um, maybe it's particular software that you need. Maybe it's equipment you need to buy. And then go to the last one. Who do you know who can help you? So who do you know that might be able to lend you some money, a friend that can lend you some money to buy this equipment that you need to get this milestone up and running? Who do you know that's going to give you that motivation to kind of chat this through and actually make that happen? Who do you know that might be able to introduce you to someone that's going to help you build your network in the field that you want to work in? So we're just kind of taking it a little bit further. You've looked at one-year goals, three-year goals, ten-year goals. You've looked at what your passions are. You've looked at your skills, your development areas, your personality. All this stuff helps. Then you've taken one of your one-year goals and you've now broken it down into mini milestones. So you've taken one of your milestones now and then for each one, you can repeat this for each of your mini milestones, look at what you need to do to achieve it and who you know who can help you get there. This just then actually starts making it quite real. Even if it was a goal that you thought, I'm never gonna, that's never going to happen in a year's time, but I just thought blue sky thinking, see what I can do. This starts actually making it quite tangible and quite achievable. Any questions? Is this useful? Yeah, so something, so it's just taking it a step further. So this mammoth goal, it's actually now starting to break it down and seeing where can you, where can you start and get the ball rolling. And actually suddenly this big goal doesn't seem too intimidating and scary and unachievable because you're starting the process to get there. Okay? Lovely. So um, to sort of wrap up for the part, last part of the session, and then as I said, um, any questions, let me know at the end. Um, but this is about sort of staying ahead of the game and um, future-proofing yourself. So I mentioned right at the start, you know, it is competitive. The job market's competitive. The industries we're working in um, are all quite competitive as well. So it's not just about waiting for a job role to pop up online or waiting for something to land on our laps. This is about actually you being proactive. So these are just different areas that is going to help you stay ahead of the game when you're looking for a job, but also when you're in a job. So it's continually sort of upskilling and learning and developing your career. So we're at Birkbeck, which is a massive fan of lifelong learning. You can see in the room we've got such diverse people, different ages, backgrounds, experiences. So that applies for anything online as well. So online courses are everywhere at the moment. So continually learn, go to events, you know, use any spare time that you might have in the summer or in other evenings or weekends to see how you can upskill. So gain new knowledge and keep your skills updated. Especially if you're in a particular technical role, you want to keep updated with how that is developing as well. Uh, take on new roles. So this doesn't need to be a new role in your career. Um, it could be outside of work. So maybe you want to join any voluntary groups. You might want to join any committees. Um, another thing I didn't put in there, but you might maybe want to start a blog. If you're looking to career change, for those of you who are career changing, one of the best ways to help you with a career change is to build your online personal profile towards the role that you want or the industry you want to work in. So maybe you want to start a monthly, weekly blog showing your expertise in the new area that you want to be in. So whether that's a passion that you've got, whether it's in marketing, you can start looking at sort of five top tips, whatever it is. Maybe you want to take, uh, analyse someone that's really good in your industry and analyse what they do and see, you know, top five things that Sanso does to be a successful strategist or whatever it might be. But blogging's a great way. There's loads of blog platforms out there. If you're on LinkedIn, who's on LinkedIn? Music to my ears, just one. That's not, um, I'll, I'll get you at the end, I promise. Um, so LinkedIn is a great networking tool and it's a great opportunity to showcase your skills, especially if you're career changing or you're looking to excel in your career. So if you are writing articles, blogs, things like that, it doesn't take a lot, um, especially if it's something you're passionate about, but that might be an, a way to get into another role. Uh, volunteering, you can gain new skills, new experiences, meet new people doing volunteering as well. Um, and always look ahead. So where are the next opportunities? If you're in a role, when you get to the position that you want or you get to the industry you want to work in, what are the opportunities that are coming up? Or where can you see a gap that might be relevant? Is there a particular project that you think they should be working on that you can say, I want to spearhead this project and this is the proposal that I'm doing? But always try to think one step ahead. So don't get too comfortable. Try to really sort of push yourself. It goes back to that ambitious and challenging elements that I had just to see where you can really go. And it all comes down to sort of the future career planning, because it's not just planning to get one job. Um, what I wanted today to be about is actually the future as well. Uh, network, I said about networking a lot, but constantly build your connections because you never know who might know someone. Um, it's really important to you know, 
I guess, try to build your networking skills if you can. I think you said one thing I've overheard you say, oh, networking, I should have had that as my development area. Um, it's not easy, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So that is about taking risks because you're getting outside of your comfort zone. If you sign up to go to a free event, look on Eventbrite, I always say this, LinkedIn, meetups, there's loads of free events in London all the time. And you'll, I guarantee you'll find something in your industry so one of the tasks that I might say that would be good to set you is to sign up in the next month, go to at least one event in your industry, take someone with you if you want to, but actually I probably recommend going on your own because it forces you to talk to other people that you don't know. And just break the ice, you know, just break the ice, start some conversations and just think what's the worst that's going to happen today. Don't walk out of there because you're intimidated by this networking scenario. Go in there thinking I could meet some really cool people who can help me get to where I want to be. So that's about staying ahead of the game and linked to that is about future-proofing yourself as well. So proactively look for opportunities to develop yourself professionally. Um, one thing I think I mentioned before that might be of interest, so if you guys are working now in an organisation, is there any job shadowing that you can do? Um, swap jobs, rotate jobs, does your organisation allow you to do that? Any coaching or mentoring that you can get involved with? Um, any buddying up or peer coaching, so could you sort of be a buddy to someone else and you can support each other on a project um, or just say for the next month we want to sort of meet up once a week to see where we can support each other. Loads of things that you can kind of delve into doing. Professional qualifications, we're all at Birkbeck, we're studying towards some sort of course or qualification, whatever it might be. Um, and if there's anything else that you look at for your new industry or the industry you want to be in, um, are there other qualifications that you might need and other ways that you can get them? Um, in terms of network, so just to give you a little bit of other top tips there, um, identify who can help you in your career journey. Uh, network within your organisation and within your industry. So don't just think networking is about sort of going external to these events of people you don't know. Start internally. Start at Birkbeck, for example. Start getting to know your peers in the room. Start getting to know people in your classes. Just because, again, people come from so many different backgrounds, so they might be able to help you out. Uh, professional associations, that's a great way to sort of establish yourself and sort of build your credibility in your positions as well. Raise your professional visibility online and offline. So again, going to events is an offline thing, but online, maybe doing the blog posts, um, you're on LinkedIn, start liking, sharing, commenting on different things. Uh, attend conferences and establish and curate your personal brand. So your personal brand being things like if you're on social media, maybe you've got a Twitter account, an Instagram account, maybe you are on LinkedIn for that brand. All of that is about your personal brand, both offline and online. So this is just things to think about to start sort of future-proofing yourself and not just thinking, okay, three months' time, the next job's time. It's actually getting you to look a little bit further ahead and constantly learning and updating. Um, and just some other slides to wrap up on, and then I think we're pretty much there. Um, so being successful. So some top tips for sort of having success and beyond success. So recognise that plans change. We've spoken about the career action plan. You spoke in between, you've had some really good conversations about wh where your plan is for the next few years or the next one year, but make sure you recognise in the back of your mind things do change. So if that plan doesn't quite go to plan, don't worry, that's completely normal. Things will veer off track. Just try to revisit the plan, adjust it, pivot, and then you can sort of move into another direction. Your plan for the next year might change completely. You might find a job in Manchester that you love the sound of and you think, oh, I'm going to Manchester, that's my new plan. So you've pivoted your plan. But obviously just make sure it's an informed decision that you want to make. If you achieve your milestone sooner, keep moving forward. So just because you've ticked that box within six months when you said you was going to do it in a year, don't cruise then for the next six months, be like, oh, I'm, ahead of, I'm ahead of my plan, I can chill. Absolutely take some time to pat yourself on the back and celebrate, but keep moving forward. Okay, this is great, let's keep that momentum going. What else could I do? I embrace the challenging moments with the positive moments. Things will get tough. Anyone doing exams at the moment? Deadlines? And yet you're still here, which is amazing. Um, so it does get challenging, it does get tough, but go back to your why. So go back to why am I doing this? Why am I trying to work towards this goal? Because that will hopefully reignite your motivation as well. Celebrate the mini triumphs. Um, I run our enterprise and entrepreneurship program here at Birkbeck, so students who are looking to start up different businesses. And with that, we get a lot of entrepreneurs come to campus and share their stories. And so many of them say their biggest regret is that they didn't celebrate the sort of the mini wins because they were so focused on getting this product out there or making this startup work 
that when they actually achieved something great, it was, okay, okay, that's done, let's move on to the next thing. When actually what they should have done is taken a bit of a step back, celebrated that win because it's amazing what you're doing along the journey. It's not just about the end goal, it's the journey to get there as well. Uh, reflect back on that note, reflect back along your journey as well. So how much progress have you made? Maybe you're a bit behind on the plan. Maybe it's nine months time, you thought you, was, you would be somewhere else by now. But just reflect back and keep setting the new goals. It's not always going to go to plan. And get feedback. So get feedback from people as well. So whether that's in your course, if you wanted to get some feedback on how you're doing in your course, in your job, you know, talk to people who you see quite a lot because that's really going to help you. Um, and just about 10 to 4, so that's all good. Um, so try to crack on now if you can. Try to think of what's the first action you're going to take now after today. Maybe it's going to be finishing your one-year plan and your milestones and identifying what you need to achieve it and who you need to get there. So that might be the first thing. And I recommend doing that sooner rather than later while it's fresh in your mind having done this session as well. Um, so it might be putting together a new CV. Maybe you need to up, you've been thinking for ages, I really need to update my CV. And keeping an up-to-date CV is always good. Uh, is it looking at posted vacancies? Is it trying to boost your experience and actually commit into that online course and software training? Finding a training course, whatever it is, try to start sooner rather than later. Yes, you've got exams and deadlines, but see what you can do, even if some jobs just take five minutes, ten minutes. You know, if you can take ten minutes out of your day towards some of this career planning stuff, you're going to be way ahead of the game than you would have been if you just start in, say, a month's time. You would have done quite a lot. So that would be my recommendation. So start sooner rather than later. Um, you can get in touch with us. So again, I'm going to share these slides, so don't worry too much if you don't have these details, but they are all on the website as well. But Birkbeck Futures is your careers, enterprise and talent recruitment service all in one. And we're based at Student Central. So even while you're studying and even beyond your studies, you can get in touch with us for support on your career development and everything essentially that I've spoken about today as well. Thank you.